death is data loss. The age-old quest for immortality is then reduced to the relatively straightforward problem of long-term data preservation. Already, we possess the technology to automatically scan and digitize brains. It was pioneered in 2006 by the professor of molecular and cellular biology, Jeff Lichtman, who leads researchers at Harvard's Center for Brain Science, and his student Kenneth Hayworth, who later founded the Brain Preservation Foundation. The technology has since been commercialized. In 2020, a collaboration of researchers from Genelia and Google's Connectomics Research Group used it to digitize the brain of a fruit fly. It can be downloaded from the website, flycircuit.tw and fruitflybrain.org. Google used their advanced AI and image processing algorithms to automatically reverse engineer brain circuitry from scans taken with electron microscopes. It produced a wiring diagram consisting of 25,000 brain cells and 3 million neural connections. Quote, in this work we have achieved a dream of anatomists that is more than a century old. For at least the central brain of at least one animal with a complex brain and sophisticated behavior, we have a complete census of all the neurons and all the cell types that compose the brain, a definitive atlas of the regions in which they reside, and a graph representing how they are connected. End quote. From a connectome of the adult Drosophila central brain, 2020. The circuitry of the fruit fly brain takes up only 26 megabytes, about 3.5% of a CD. But it's estimated that an equivalent digitization of the circuitry of the human brain would require 20 petabytes, nearly a billion times more storage, or 1,000 of today's largest hard drives. At today's prices, it would cost over $300,000 just for the hard drives. But the cost of storing bits drops by a factor of 1,000 every 15 years. If the trend holds, by 2035 you could back up your brain for $300. Longevity Escape Velocity In 1900, life expectancy in the United States was 47 years. By 2000 it had risen to 75 years, an increase of 28 years over a century. Put another way, for each year during the 20th century, life expectancy increased by three months. Should future technology enable life expectancy to grow by 12 months per year, then humanity will achieve technological immortality. Living long enough to live forever. Ray Kurzweil, author of Fantastic Voyage, Live Long Enough to Live Forever, envisions a future where life extension technologies add more years every year than we age. Quote, An analysis of the history of technology shows that technological change is exponential, contrary to the common sense intuitive linear view. So we won't experience 100 years of progress in the 21st century, it will be more like 20,000 years of progress, at today's rate. End quote. Ray Kurzweil in The Law of Accelerating Returns, 2000. Aubrey de Grey has coined this concept, longevity escape velocity. We don't possess technological immortality today. However, you might be young enough to live to that future where we do. Along the way we might see age reversal therapies that grant us enough extra time to make it to the point of technological immortality. Quote, I think the first person to live to 1000 might be 60 already. End quote. Aubrey de Grey in 2004. How old were you in 2004? If you were under 60, then according to de Grey you could live long enough to celebrate your 1000th birthday. Conclusions? Every culture has a name for it, Amrita, Soma, Ambrosia, Nectar of the Gods, Tree of Life, Elixir of Life, Philosopher's Stone, Fountain of Youth. All represent the same dream, escaping the fate of old age and death. Modern medicine is on the verge of finding a real fountain of youth. We've extended lifespans of organisms tenfold, used drugs to shave years off people's age, reprogrammed cells to become youthful, 
and we are developing tools that could one day enable digital immortality. Can we do it? In 2005, MIT challenged molecular biologists to find a flaw in Aubrey de Grey's strategies for engineered negligible senescence SENS. They offered a $20,000 prize to whomever could make the best argument. Despite that, it was the opinion of the judges that no submission met the criterion of the challenge and disproved SENS. Since 2005, we've learned to create stem cells, print organs, and modify genes at will. Feynman's quote is as true today as it was when he spoke it, there is nothing in biology yet found that indicates the inevitability of death. This is confirmed by the discovery of immortal species, they show it is possible to repair all the damage that comes with age. We know it can be done. It's then only a matter of time until we figure it out. Should we do it? The less certain question is not whether we can do it, but should we? Some say to use such powers is unnatural, that it is playing God, or that it will lead to disastrous overpopulation and resource depletion. Life extension is unnatural. By this measure, every technology, from books, to air conditioning, to soap, is unnatural. But it is our nature to transcend our natural limits. Why stop with aging, when it causes so much suffering? Quote. We will transcend death and that natural cycle. We're not just grapes on the vine, we are overcoming that natural process that we emerged from. Yes, we came from nature, but we are going to surpass it through the power of our technology, which comes from our mind made manifest in the real world. End quote. Ray Kurzweil. Overpopulation. The Roman philosopher Lucretius argued 2000 years ago that death was good, because it made room for the next generation. Quote. Up, with good grace. Make room for sons, thou must. Justly, I fancy, would she reason thus. Justly in vain and gird, since ever the old. Outcrowded by the new gives way, and ever. The one thing from the others is repaired. End quote. Titus Lucretius Carus in On the Nature of Things, circa 60 BC. But this reasoning, that curing death inevitably leads to overpopulation, overcrowding, resource depletion and environmental destruction ignores possibilities that technology makes possible. Consider the following example from history. Quote. Suppose you're a scientist 200 years ago who has figured out how to drastically lower infant mortality with better hygiene. You give a talk on this, and someone stands up in back and says, hang on, if we do that we're going to have a population explosion. If you reply, no, everything will be fine because we'll all wear these absurd rubber things when we have sex, nobody would have taken you seriously. Yet that's just what happened, Barrier contraception was widely adopted about the time that infant mortality began dropping. End quote. Aubrey de Grey in Fortune, 2004. Technological Solutions The technologies that enable nanomedicine and digital immortality are the very same tools that can solve problems of overpopulation, overcrowding, and resource depletion, all while allowing the world's population of humans to increase by a factor of millions. Our current approach to growing food is enormously inefficient. It takes an acre of farmland to feed each person. Over the day, this acre of farmland receives an average of 663,684 watts of solar energy. If we used this energy to directly synthesize food, for example with nanotechnology, we could feed 6,853 people. Food synthesis technology will enable us to drastically reduce our footprint on the environment, while at the same time support much greater human populations. What about overcrowding? Humanity, as it turns out, does not take up much space. Every human on Earth, all 7.8 billion of us, 
could fit in a building one cubic mile in volume and 1,000 of these buildings would fit in the Grand Canyon. The reason we face overpopulation and resource depletion today, is that our food production is so space and energy inefficient. See our episode What are the limits of human population growth? Future technologies, like mind uploading will not only provide each person unlimited space in virtual reality, but also enable people to live anywhere. For instance, on the moon. The moon receives 13,000 terawatts of solar energy. Since the human brains uses 20 watts of power, this is enough energy to power 650 trillion human souls, 83,000 times Earth's current population. We could leave Earth and allow the environment to heal. Perhaps this has happened already. See our episode, Are We Living in a Computer Simulation?